Welcome back to the second installment of my uh, Bronco video log here. Um, so big thing is I have moved and now my Bronco sits in a garage. So that is a mighty improvement. It makes working on it a whole lot easier. Keeps it out of the rain and whatnot that will uh, continue to rust uh, the body. Um, so uh, it does look like I have sort of, uh, to, to the neighbors, it kind of looks like I've neglected this thing just because of the way it's sitting. I kind of have trash on top of it and, um, uh, you know, it just sits in the garage here. But uh, I've been making some pretty good progress lately. Um, so I'll show you what's going on here. Um, so in order to move it, I had to do new uh, brakes front and rear. Um, right now, uh, of course, I have everything apart here, um, but this was so that we could get it on and off the trailer without, uh, you know, killing ourselves <laughs> with no brakes. So front and rear brakes are all brand new. I have new drums in the back here. So um, trying to get the flashlight to work while I'm filming here. I don't think it's going to. Anyway, so there are new brake drums back there. I also took out the fuel tank and uh, the skid plate, and I painted the fuel tank with a galvanized finish and took the skid plate and painted it with uh, Rust-Oleum gloss. So um, as for the interior, I've completely stripped it. Um, it was pretty gross inside, um, lots of mouse houses and whatnot. Um, it was really bothering my allergies, so it, it had to go. So it's completely stripped. Uh, some of the parts are in here, but most of them are stored away in my attic. So quite a bit of junk inside of here, but hey, that's okay. I thought I was going to complete the interior first, but um, I'm kind of scatterbrained, so that didn't really happen, but that's okay. As soon as the front end, which is what I'm working on, is complete, um, then I think I will resume cleaning up the interior um, and getting it prepped for the eventual paint and bodywork. I haven't really done anything under the hood. Um, I painted valve cover and uh, and I also replaced the gasket. And uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing really much. I also changed the oil and put in another oil filter. So right here, you can see I have the steering knuckle totally out um, and the axle shaft totally out. And I've been wire wheeling this side. I decided to go further on this side rather than the passenger side, just so that I could figure out how to do it first. And then I was going to um, do the other side, uh, just like how I did this one. So it'll be quicker to do, uh, in my mind, one side at a time, once I figure out how to do it. Um, so after I do the front end, I'm also gonna be doing the front suspension. So, as you can see right here, I have both steering knuckles out. I have uh, ball joints in. So, those are already in. Um, axle shaft right here. I painted it, and but I had to beat it up really bad to get the U-joint back in. But that's okay. Not really anybody's going to see that. Um, lots of new tools. Um, I actually built this workbench specifically to work on the Bronco. Um, so that has been a great help. I was just doing everything on the ground. Uh, cleaned up some spindles here. Uh, sorry for the mess. So I cleaned up my spindles. I removed the bearings from the inside. And those are getting degreased right now. Um, I packed the bearings and these uh, 
hub and rotor assemblies. I made these myself uh, using a handy dandy press, which I will show you. I always get the wrong drawer. This uh, press right here, you use an impact or a um, or a socket wrench, and um, you turn the nut uh, on this uh, stud right here. And uh, this has a this has a bearing on it, which allows it to spin. And uh, it's really easy to put these studs on. So. I've already uh, packed the wheel bearing, the uh, inner wheel bearing inside of there. I have the outers right here. As soon as um, I uh, put these on, I'll put those outer wheel bearings on. Um, what else do I have here? I'll show you some of the parts that are gonna be going in the front here. So I have Bilstein B6 shocks. These are gonna go in the front. And I have uh, some KYB uh, gas adjust shocks. They're gonna go in the rear. I bought some for the front initially, um, but I decided to go with the Bilsteins because they're softer. I wanted a softer ride, but in the rear, I may be putting my motorcycle on the back. So uh, I wanted it to be a little bit heavier duty. Uh, the hubs were completely trashed, so I'll show you the ones that are going on. I mean, I'm sorry, I mean the locking hubs were trashed, so I got these nice uh, worn hubs here. So these will be real fancy, um, probably a lot more built up than I'm gonna need, but that's okay. Um, I think they look nicer and they will probably age nicer than the cheaper worn hubs or the mile marker ones. I just don't want them to get oxidized and look all crappy. Um, so yeah, I've also been doing a little bit of painting here so you can see that. Um, I'm, the reason why I'm wire wheeling right now and not putting these back on is because uh, I left um, the little brake dust shields um, at work and uh, I was going to sandblast those, but I didn't have the chance. So I'm going to show you the springs that I have. So I just got these yesterday. And uh, actually, no, I got them today. So I'm pretty stoked to get these on soon. Another thing is that I did get a tailgate. Um, and I have buyer's remorse. Let me get this magnet off of there. I've got some buyer's remorse because um, it doesn't line up correctly. It's like the tailgate is bent and... Um, the, the bolt holes on it for the hinges are, um, they are, uh, stripped. So this does fortunately have a window inside of it and the parts I would assume, you know, work. So, um, I'm just going to order a new, um, tailgate, uh, assembly, I suppose, and I'll put parts inside of it, anything I can salvage. Um, I'm going to, uh, get rid of this body panel right here. Um, it is definitely, um, you know, I, I don't think that this is going to be repairable, um, cheaply. So I'm just going to buy the entire quarter panel without spare tire carrier. I don't want my spare tire outside. Um, it's going to go on the inside of the truck. And I think that is, uh, going to be the best route, you know, so that doesn't get stolen or whatnot. Um, so yeah, you can see my progress right here so far. I haven't taken the axle shaft out just yet. Um, oh, and here's something important. Let me 
these are the wheels. Uh, let me open this with something. These are the wheels that I am going to be putting on. Unfortunately, um, the paint on these is fairly low quality. These were actually the cheapest ones that I could find, but I figured, hey, if it's not great, I'm gonna get them repainted to uh, Wimbledon white. So this color here. Um, and uh, that should, you know, that should really do it. Um, if it turns out that the paint kind of flakes and is crappy. So yeah, um, lots of new tools. Here is my ball joint press kit. Um, the original one that I had, it was a, um, a cheaper version of this uh, C-frame press um, that came with these uh, ball joint cups here. But I ended up uh, shelling out $94 for the American made one. Um, I haven't used it yet, but uh, that the Chinese made one certainly did not last that long. Um, the threads started getting wear really bad, and this time I've actually uh, greased up the threads on this one. Um, I think I learned my lesson. I'm going to make this one last. Um, so I do have this cheap Irwin vise right here. Uh, you know what? Not happy with that. Very soft metal, and the vise binds up, and this handle sucks. Um, but at least it's not made in China, it's made in Taiwan. Uh, and then this was given to me, and this has been a godsend for um, doing things such as widening uh, a pickle fork that I, uh, I bought too small, but this has been very helpful. Um, it has allowed me to, you know, work on a lot of these parts um, to uh, a more... That's about it for my progress here. I do have an idea how I want to do the interior. Um, I'm thinking either have these seats rebuilt um, or get a bench to um, go across here. I think the bench would, would be uh, fairly nice because then I could put in a center console um, that, you know, uh, yeah, I could put in a center console or if I don't put in a center console, I could, I'm always able to, uh, you know, uh, slip out of the seat and kind of walk to the back uh, here. But uh, we will see about that. Um, I'm gonna do a chrome, chrome grill, uh, same style. Uh, the bumper will also be chrome, front and back. I know I wanted to do original restore, but um, I think the chrome is uh, looks much nicer um, and it will be a lot easier to clean. Um, I'm going to keep the, the trim here. Um, there is an alternate uh, chrome trim uh, package that had uh, chrome wheel wells and did not have the chrome that uh, ran along the body like that. So I'm gonna keep it just like this. I think that will look fine once it's all cleaned up and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, my goal is to get this thing street legal by the end of this year. And um, hopefully that will actually happen. It's definitely not gonna look pretty, but um, I'm hoping to uh, get to you know that stage sometime soon. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned.